I'm Steve Preston, known as the Career Catalyst. And uh, I'm based in the UK and uh, I'm a leading career coach, internationally acclaimed author, speaker and creator of inspirational career and personal development products. So why am I here today? Well, we're now day two, round two of UK lockdown. And it's very evident uh, from what I've seen that many people are struggling in this current situation. And that applies to obviously to people who are unfortunate casualties of the COVID crisis and have lost their jobs as a result of redundancy or layoff. And, and also uh, many people who are currently furloughed or, or re-furloughed. Uh, and this whole furlough situation seems to be a very confusing situation for many people and employers. And um, I thought it'd be opportune today to provide some practical hope and, to, uh, and some top tips to help people um, beat the redundancy blues or even the furlough blues. And uh, something I saw today posted that um, rather bizarre situation, but people who've already been um, affected by redundancy, they've already been given notice of redundancy, uh, depending on when that was, they now have an opportunity to be um, re-employed and furloughed by their employer. Now this applies in the UK, I don't know if it applies in other countries. So we are certainly in crazy and uncharted times without any shadow of doubt. Um, so anyway, um, I thought um, take advantage of the opportunity. I haven't done a, a live stream for some while now. I've done many webinars uh, through the summer but not just an impromptu live stream like this. And even if you're not currently on live, then um, you'll probably pick this up later through various um, social media streams. So one of the things that um, is very apparent in the current climate, probably more so than ever, is that many people are really struggling with the emotions of redundancy or even furlough because you don't know what uh, the future holds. Um, it could be that um, you'll be unfurloughed and you'll retain your job uh, in the future or it could be just a stay of execution which um, it seems to have been for many people. But at least, you know, you're in a better situation than those people who really have the rug pulled from underneath them. And dare I suggest you can do some planning behind the scenes while you're furloughed. And from my perspective, that makes total sense. So don't rely on the fact that you will get your job back in the way it was before, in which case be proactive and start managing your career and life. So <clears throat> I'm going to go through a number of um, do's and don'ts and what I call coping strategies. And I've covered these on um, most of my um, webinars throughout the summer. But uh, for the benefit of potentially a new audience, then um, I think it's important to really get to grips with uh, some of these. So the first thing is... Um, you know, if you've been affected by a redundancy situation, then, as I said, everybody will react differently. There's no right or wrong way to feel. However, you know, allow yourself to grieve for a while, um, but only a short while. One of the things that um, uh, people talk about with redundancy, it's one of the most stressful situations that you can encounter in your life along with um, bereavements and divorce and so on. Um, and to a large extent, redundancy is a 
bereavement for many people. So allow yourself to grieve for a while, but only for a short while. One of the most important aspects of um, a redundancy is to regroup and take stock and press that reset button. And this is something that people rarely do uh, unless the rug's been pulled from underneath them. So it's important to start to see your redundancy as an opportunity rather than a threat. And it, it's really um, interesting to see what's happening in, this, in these current crazy times. Um, but a lot of people seem to be starting up businesses that maybe wouldn't have thought about that before because there is the adage that if you can't um, secure a job, a, a job and you can't get the type of job you want then why not create that in your own way and um, I've seen many people and know some examples firsthand where people have been going through rounds and rounds and rounds of interview processes which personally I, I, I think is completely um, unnecessary and uh, employers taking advantage of the current um, situation and it's soul destroying for candidates who are taken through rounds and rounds of uh, different um, uh, interviews. So um, if you're in that situation and then you come to the conclusion that um, maybe um, I've had enough of all these interviews and then you get um, uh, not back at the final hurdle and I know people who have been in that situation at a fifth interview and at a seventh round of interviews absolutely crazy so if you are in that situation well then you know maybe it is time to completely rethink and start to do something on your own um, so Yes, regroup, reset, and start to see your redundancy as an opportunity rather than a threat. There's something else I've seen uh, consistently throughout this whole um, COVID crisis with people who have been affected by a redundancy um, or a layoff situation. And I appreciate in North America and other parts of the world, you tend to talk about uh, layoffs rather than redundancy so um, if you hear me saying redundancy think layoff if you're in North America um, but people not putting themselves first now it's a key time in your life where you need to really think about yourself and you might be the sort of person and I'm not suggesting you know it's to be selfish but you might be the sort of person who naturally always puts others first, which is admirable. But when you're in a situation where all of a sudden the rug's being pulled and you need to think about your livelihood, then clearly, you know, it's important that you do put yourself first. Um, but not just in terms of um, your job search, one of the most important things I learned when I went through my uh, redundancy uh, process many years ago is that one of the best ways to win through redundancy, and this is a great tip, is to actually work on yourself. So I'm talking about personal development. And if you actually spend as much time, if not more time, working on yourself in, in, in this situation, uh, where you you realistically have time to, then I guarantee you'll get payback. And certainly in my case, it helped me to develop a new passion for personal development. And I attribute a lot of my success after that as a result of really having become self-aware and having a much greater idea of what I wanted to, not just what I wanted to do in terms of a job or a career, 
but the difference I wanted to make to people's lives. Um, and it's a different way of looking at it. With personal development, you're working on yourself and you're working on your mind. You're basically working on developing yourself to become the best person you can be. Whereas more people, or most people, tend to focus on their professional development. But if you're in a transition period and you're no longer in your previous job or career, then focusing on your professional development, unless you're absolutely dead set on doing more of the same and convinced that's the best route for you, then working on yourself is going to be a much better route because by doing that, it could open up a whole new world of thinking about what you do next, which is something that I find all the time uh, in my coaching sessions with clients and also uh, my latest course, Winning Through Redundancy and Layoffs. The number of people who have been through that course and started off down the road of trying to achieve clarity and thinking it was going to be about, not necessarily more of the same, but possibly a, a, the term pivot and that comes up all the time now, doing something slightly different, using your skills and attributes in a different way. Um, but in reality, what's happened is they're now going down a completely different route. Not always, but often starting a new venture of their own, which is fantastic. So work on yourself as much as your job search or your career transition. And think about it as career transition. You know, having gone through a redundancy process, you are in a transition state. It's moving from where you were before to either where you want to get to, or if you don't know where that is, then getting the clarity in order to help you achieve that. Another key tip, which is sort of related to the last one really, is that um, it's very important to spend your day productively. Now I put up my hand in, in my redundancy. I was um, a champion of procrastination and a lot of people go into procrastination mode. But why is that? Well, it's not just because of the emotional response to redundancies and this emotional roller coaster ride which it uh, usually becomes for most people. It's also because you're really unsure what direction to go in. So it's almost, well, should I spend my time on my job search or should I spend my time doing other things which in which case it deflects me from having to think about my job search. But as I've just alluded to, often the best way is to work on yourself and your own personal development, whether that's by um, reading books, going to online seminars, um, webinars, and so on. And uh, I know for many people, my first book, Winning Through Redundancy, Six Steps to Navigate Your Way to a Brighter Future, um, which got over 50 reviews on Amazon, has been an absolute godsend uh, for many people and to this day is still getting uh, fabulous reviews um, and feedback uh, from many different types of people um, around the world, which is fantastic. And, and having seen my stats on Amazon recently, my books are selling in countries I would have never believed, uh, like Brazil um, and Italy um, and um, India. So, you know, this sort of work holds uh, no boundaries, if you like. Uh, if you understand uh, the power of personal development and career development, then basically it will work anyway. So do spend your day productively. Just set a few goals. Just taking a quick sup of tea. Um, one of the goals I set myself today was to do this live webinar to try and make a difference, to help um, other people 
and give them a bit of a boost, a bit of a shot in the arm in these um, crazy challenging times. So set some goals. Obviously they need to be realistic, um, but don't set lows. Don't have a massive list. Just set, you know, maybe three goals. And then once you've achieved those, you can go on to three more. It's a, it's a very simple process of threes. One of the most important things, especially in this current climate, is to talk to people. It's good to talk, as the old saying used to go. And in these virtual times, although you might not be talking to people live in a room together necessarily, there's still loads of ways you can do it, such as these sort of calls. Uh, Zoom calls, WhatsApp, smartphone, whatever. Um, and utilising uh, online groups and forums, and especially, uh, most importantly for any career professionals or executives, really developing and enhancing your personal brand on LinkedIn, which we'll come back to later. And that's the key point. Um, you know, social media is here with us to stay, whether we like it or not. And <clears throat> uh, having done this uh, career development work now for going on for 19 years, it never ceases to amaze me how many career professionals and um, executives shun social media, but particularly LinkedIn. You know, the thought is that your reputation is good enough so that you shouldn't uh, need to um, embrace such platforms. However, it's um, another old adage, you've got to be in it to win it. And LinkedIn is the hub. LinkedIn is where it's all happening in terms of um, jobs being posted. Not that I'm suggesting you go down that route and we'll talk about that shortly but it's also um, the way to develop relationships online and to optimize your networks and the more you do that the greater chance of success you've got which we'll talk about later something i learned um, during my time in my transition and again, I think it's ever more important in these challenging times is to manage your career transition uh, as a project. And what do I mean by that? Well, a project's got a start date, it's got an end date, and an end date in your case would be when you've achieved a successful outcome. Um, but the other thing a project has is constant reflection and review. And by doing that, it means you might stop doing things that aren't working, or you might do more of what is working, or you might try something different as well. So it's really helpful to think about your career transition or your job search as uh, a project and work at it in that way. And it's a step-by-step -step approach, if you like. Um, a project's always got milestones, and those milestones are going to be different for, for everybody. But it's a great way then to plan in a, in a, in a more structured way. And one of the biggest challenges for most people who are going through a redundancy situation, it's what I call the career transition maze. And it is a maze. For a lot of people, it's hard to find your way out. You can't see the wood for the trees. And as with any maze, you could end up going back on yourself. You could end up going all over the show before you actually get through the other side. So it's important that you do have proven strategies to help you get to the other side of the maze to help you win through. And <clears throat> that's something both my book and my online program 
winning through redundancy and layoffs. Um, it's helping people with proven strategies, along with coaching support or without it, to actually help you work through that career transition maze. Nothing worse than starting with a blank sheet of paper, uh, especially in these challenging times. And I always say, you know, you can't hit a target you can't see, if that makes sense. So, other key do's. And again, this is something I come across a lot at the moment, and it's difficult for, for some people to work through. But do believe that most people generally want to help you. And something I say all the time is you never know who can unlock the key to your future. And what do I mean by that? Well, again, it goes back to networking and the whole ethos of networking. Going back a number of years ago, when people went through a redundancy situation, it was almost a mindset or mentality of give us a job with anyone they met. Now, in the best way possible, that's not really going to um, engage people or make people think, I want to help this guy. Um, but what a lot of people will do, and I remember this in, in my transition period, a lot of people will try and put themselves in your situation and think, well, what, what would I do if I had been made redundant and I was in Steve's situation, uh, you know, I'd like to think I would help them and, and put them on the straight and narrow and at least be able to um, either give some advice, especially if, you, if they'd been through a redundancy situation themselves, or maybe um, offer up some contacts, some connections who might be able to open doors or even uh, more so if somebody's uh, already got uh, thoughts around what they might want to do next, to be able to make some introductions into somebody who really would benefit from your services or from your skills and attributes. So it might not be the most obvious people you think. And that, this is something I find all the time. It's not necessarily the most obvious people who can unlock the key to your future. It might be somebody they know, or somebody who they know, who they know. So it's somebody in the chain. But have that core belief that most people genuinely want to help. And that's really important. And don't turn down help, and we'll come back to that one shortly. Again, something I learnt, um, which could have been hugely damaging in my respect, but I see this all the time again. Get some independent financial advice. Now, obviously, everybody's financial situation is different, and I'm not just talking about in terms of how long your money's going to last, which is obviously important, uh, and how much you got saved and so on. Things like your pension. It's so easy to overlook this. And you, you don't necessarily always get a lot of help from your employer in this respect. Some employers will, as part of the redundancy process, um, uh, make it obvious who you need to contact in order to review your pension fund. But a lot won't, or a lot don't. So I think it's really important that you do um, get independent advice on your pension in my respect it was one of those things that yes you get a pension statement every year and you think oh that's interesting and then you just put it to one side don't really take a lot of notice on it and in my infinite naivety i just assumed that my employer was looking after my pension in the best way <laughs> oh dear that was very naive i actually found that my pension pot had been going backwards quite dramatically for a number of years. But I didn't really understand 
I take a lot of notice of pension statements, as I mentioned. So I, um, I was networked to a pensions advisor, uh, and uh, basically this guy uh, is a self-confessed pensions guru or geek, uh, and he saved my bacon without any shadow of doubt. So I learnt very early on, it's very, very important to um, reassess not just your finances, but, but your pension. And if it's not working for you, then you need to make sure it is going to work for you moving forward. And back to networks again. Get the right support network around you. Um, it's really important at this key time to surround yourself with positive people. People who are going to boost you up, not people who are going to pull you down, which is so easy. And of course, career coaches like myself um, are ideal for this, but um, you'd only want to work with a career coach who's recommended. And again, in these crazy times, it looks like what happens in the last recession, every man Jack is suddenly reinventing himself as a career coach. Um, don't be fooled by this. It's very important you work with somebody who's recommended. Somebody's got proven success and somebody's got proven strategies to help you win through redundancy. And in general, your, your support network, uh, and you know, it might not just be the people you think. It's something that um, has become very apparent in the COVID era. And it's go I'm going to be an interviewing uh, somebody next week around this. A contact that actually lives quite close to to where I live, but I'd never come across until um, the COVID crisis, and we it was very apparent we were on the same page about a lot of things. So your networks might become very different uh, in these strange times. So you know, just because somebody. Uh, might want to connect with you who you hadn't necessarily thought about was somebody you would have expected in the past. They might now be somebody you can actually um, really relate to and resonate with your situation who could champion your cause. But the most important thing is say surround, get a support network around you uh, of, of positive people. One of the first things I did when the uh, coronavirus struck and it was obvious that things were going to be very different and we went into lockdown, I reinvented my LinkedIn Winning Through group, something I set up uh, a number of years ago after the launch of my first book, Winning Through Redundancy. And it wasn't a, a group to promote the book, it was more a group to uh, promote strategies for winning through career and life and my goodness me do we ever need them at this current time so i reignited or and reinvented my winning through group on linkedin to become a beacon of positivity and light and to share um videos uh, not just videos that i was making but to share good news stories as well and to curate content that would motivate and inspire people and give them practical hope in these challenging times. But also to encourage others, members in the group, to do likewise. So um, that's something that's continued throughout um, the COVID crisis. It's something that I can see I'm planning to continue for some while. I've interviewed many, many fascinating and inspiring people who um, have got some great stories to tell but are living proof of the importance of resilience and being positive and really op opportunistic um, in, in not just in these challenging times but in general um, so if you don't um, Currently, if you're not a member of my LinkedIn Winning Through group, look out for it online. 
and uh, I'd love to see you there, um, especially if you want to get engaged and involved in uh, a caring, sharing, support network community. Now, something else again that um, I, I've seen consistently and even more so in this um, COVID crisis, everyone has fears, uh, especially if they've been laid off. It's understandable. Uh, fear of getting another job, fear of um, running out of money, fear of failure, lots of different fears. But what is important is that you're honest about them and you give yourself permission to share those fears with other people. And why is it? Well, again, quite simply, because if you don't do that, then how can you possibly banish those fears if you haven't been honest about them in the first place? So it's really key that um, you give yourself permission to open up and be honest about your fears. And as I mentioned, the emotional roller coaster ride, a lot of that will have fear come into it at various stages. Um, and it's something that comes back. It's not just in one stage of the, of the transition process. It's often when you get towards clarity and think you know, something you might want to do next. Uh, and especially if it's something different, then the fear could kick in again. Well, what if it doesn't work? What if I don't earn enough? Um, and so on. So being honest about your fears, giving permission to talk about your fears is really key. Then you can banish them and you will get support from people to help you. Something else that's really important and is again real positive is to celebrate small wins and um you know i've worked with a number of clients over the years who've actually said this was one of the most important aspect in their transition process they hadn't realized uh, how important it was to actually recognize and celebrate those small wins so they could see themselves making progress Otherwise, it, it, you know, again, it's back to shooting in the dark and you can't hit a target you can't see, as I mentioned. So the small win, what do I mean by these? Well, it could be you've just developed another new contact or connection who might be very helpful to you in the future. You might have got your first interview. You might have... Um, revamped your LinkedIn profile and suddenly people are recognizing that and, and uh, are engaging and are contacting you. It could be a number of things. So each stage along the way, it's good to recognize that and give yourself either a metaphorical pat on the back or if it's something that actually turns into something more significant, like a connection who opens doors for you, then you might really want to celebrate that more in the way that you like to your best with a glass of wine or a beer or whatever um, bar of chocolate it doesn't have to be anything significant it's just recognizing it and celebrating it as a route to your end goal and last but not least on these uh, coping strategies and do's and I've already alluded to it in a certain respect, you now have an opportunity to live your dream. Or if you've never thought about what that dream might be, to actually start to create your vision of success. That's a key part of the transition process. In order that you can do what you want. And as I say, in these challenging times where employers seem to be taking advantage of employees in all sorts of awful ways, then now's the time to take back control and start to think about living your dream rather than living the dream and the visions and goals of a, an employer where arguably 
it's likely to be very short term anyway. Now that might sound a bit harsh, but unfortunately that's the reality of the current situation. So some food for thought for you, I'm, I'm sure. Um, so now I'm going to share some don'ts, and obviously there's some overlap, which I, I totally understand. Um, for those of you who are old enough to remember Dad's Army or have seen the reruns of Dan's Army, don't panic. Um, don't panic, Mr. Mannering. Um, it's the natural instinct for many, many people to think, oh my God. The rug's been pulled. How am I going to survive? It may not seem like it if it's very new and raw to you, but I guarantee it's important, as I mentioned, just to take that step back and regroup and then be able to press the reset button. It's very, very important. Um, don't go into panic mode. And I'm going to share something else in a sec, which is another example of that. And don't live in the past. You know, I've developed a six-step process, my career navigation cycle process, which has been proven successful and it's helped to transform the careers and lives of thousands of people around the globe through my books, through my coaching programs, through my online programs, uh, and all sorts of different aspects. Um, and step one is let go and look forward. And yes, by all means, and it is important, take the learning from the past, but bring it forward with you. Don't harp on about the past. And there's a wonderful quote, and I think it's attributed to Eleanor Roosevelt. Uh, Yesterday is history. Tomorrow is mystery. Let's get on with today. And in terms of the career transition, that's very, very relevant. Focus on the here and now and developing your strategies for the future. But certainly don't harp on about the past and what's happened to you. Um, which links to a, another key don't. And I've seen this time and again, very easy to get into this. Don't do what I call dump your baggage on other people. You know, it's very easy to do. You might be in a bad place at the moment you might feel aggrieved about what's happened uh, in terms of um, uh, your uh, job being pulled from you or you might be furloughed. Um, but if you bleat on about it and are always talking about it in a negative way to other people, people won't want to help you. And we'll come back to that in a second in a minute. Um, and also, don't beat yourself up. And I, I mean that, obviously, metaphorically. As in most things in life, it's, it's almost always two steps forward and one step back. And even on my six-step process, which I sort of alluded to a minute ago, the same thing applies. So it could be inevitably that you start making good progress, you, you get some small wins, which as I mentioned, hopefully you'll be celebrating, and then you're gonna get a knockback. So it might be that, you know, your CV or resume gets you to an interview and you don't get the job. Well, it might seem the end of the world at that particular moment in time, but some things work right. You've got to an interview, but maybe it wasn't right, maybe, um, you didn't give it your best shot. There could be all sorts of reasons for that. But take the learning from that situation again and bring it forward with you. Let go of it, take the learning, move forward. Don't become an island. And what do I mean by that? Well, again, this is something that's um, happened regularly with people who are affected by redundancy. They've gone into their shell uh, and almost hidden, ashamed to talk to people at a time when you really need to be out there uh, and succumb to what I call transition paralysis. Yeah, what do I mean by that? Well, it's back to almost uh, what I talked about at the beginning, procrastination mode, but it's because you're frozen into that transition 
paralysis and you can't see the way forward. But if you do go into your shell and you hide yourself away, both um, online and offline, so to speak, then how on earth are you going to make progress? So don't become an island. It's really important. And don't let your job title define you. Again, what do I mean by that? Well, um, you know, so many people uh, become um, defined by the fact. My job title, let's say I'm a financial controller. Um, so instead of actually explaining to people more about what you're looking to achieve and, um, and the type of organisation, if you're still looking to be employed, that you're looking to get a job in, um, you just focus on your job title. I'm a this, I'm a that, I'm the other. Well, you're not. You're a human being and you have emotions, you have skills, you have attributes and you have lots of things going for you. Um, so don't let your job title define who you are. Um, focus on what you want to achieve moving forward. And in these strange times, again, job titles are very nebulous and sometimes a job title can be totally misleading. It really doesn't represent the sort of work that you would expect for a particular job title. Um, I'm trying to think of an example of it. I know I saw one the other day and I'm thinking, goodness me, that you know, if you'd said to me, um, well, what does that job involve with that job title? I would have said it was something completely different. So it's really important that, and again, it's back to the past. Well, yes, just because you have been that particular job title as part of your career or maybe even your whole career, it doesn't mean to say you have to continue to do that. And, you know, I'm living proof of that as well as, as uh, you know, many people I know and obviously hundreds uh, of my clients over the years. Um, you're never too late to change. So don't, don't, don't let your job title define who you are. And don't neglect your health. And this sort of links back to becoming an island. Um... It's important, yes, you might think, well, I've got to rein in the costs, and that's probably so, um, uh, especially if you haven't uh, walked away with some money as a result of redundancy, which in this current climate is quite difficult for many people to do, uh, unless you've been there a long time and you've got a high-level position. Um, in which case, yes, you might want to cancel your gym membership, and in lockdown, you can't really do a lot with it anyway. But you can still do exercise. You can, you know, walk, you can cycle, you can do exercise to keep you mind and body active. Um, and you can do things like yoga, which uh, certainly in the last lockdown and since have been an absolute godsend uh, for myself and um, both my physical and mental well-being. So there's loads of stuff you can do. And, and again, eating well so you're not just eating uh, junk food and rubbish um, it's important that uh, uh, you know feed mind and body in the best way possible and it doesn't have to cost you loads of money don't turn down people's help well I talked about you never know who, who can unlock the key to your future and most people generally want to help um, but you might be in a situation where your employer is offering you outplacement support. And if you haven't heard of that term, what is outplacement support? Well, basically it's uh, career transition support to help you move on in your uh, post to your job. Uh, employers don't have to provide that service. Um, I think it's wonderful that uh, employers do this because it will give you a head start um, and equally, uh, there's different types of outplacement support. And, um, you know, I mentioned my winning through redundancy and layoffs course. 
um, online course which I support with group coaching or even one-on-one -on -one coaching feedback suggested that that lends itself beautifully for employers to use as an outplacement alternative outplacement option for their departing employees and in fact at this moment in time I've actually got a couple of people working through the course who have been funded by their employers but as a result of that I've actually set up um, a separate course exactly the same the difference is that the welcome videos um, and the uh, landing page of the course are, are, are completely different so they are targeted to, to employers and employees of the employer to understand that they are being funded by their employer for the course which is great um, but if you do get off of that support then for goodness sake take it the only person or the only people who will lose out if you don't accept support that's offered is yourself and yet time and again I see people turn down outplacement support um, even when they've been uh, offered a huge budget to source their own outplacement has happened a number of years ago with some contacts and um, you know we had uh, people approach my company uh, SMP Solutions Korean People Development Limited to have their outplacement support with us because we specialize in bespoke outplacement and that's exactly what they wanted because they were um, uh, senior executives in those organizations and they didn't want a standard outplacement solution which was great but I from memory there were seven people offered that support which was incredibly generous and only one took it up and why was that well that's because of my next point uh, and that is about don't join the negative brigade or think you already know it all and some of these people who were offered that support they were senior executives and they thought that again their reputation was strong enough they knew enough about how to transition their career that they didn't need to bother with the support that they were offered well guess who lost out the the one who took the support with my company um, flourished and moved forward and got an even bigger and better job and really helped to uh, achieve their uh, career goals whereas the others were still struggling months down the line now here's a really contentious one um, but if you follow people like Andrew McCaskill on LinkedIn then uh, you will know that uh, both him and I are of the same view on this and I've just uh, recently interviewed Andrew McCaskill for my winning through group on LinkedIn and it will be available on wider social media very soon and that is don't spend your life on the internet applying for jobs especially on job boards and to recruiters well you might be thinking well that's ridiculous Steve why are you saying that well I'm saying that quite simply because on a lot of these uh, uh, job boards you can see how many people have applied and in the current climate it's hundreds it could be five six hundred people so you are one of five to six hundred people so you've got a one in five to six hundred chance of getting the job or uh, taken to an interview so what's the alternative well rather than spending as some people do and proudly boast eight nine hours a day uh, searching for jobs on the internet and job boards what if you completely rethink and reframe that altogether and go back to what I was saying previously about the power of social media and networking and actually spend a few hours of a day focusing on 
developing your relationships with your connections and also increasing your connections, developing your networks and going back to what I said earlier about either finding people who can open doors for you or finding people who know you already and are likely to champion your cause. Either give you an introduction to somebody or even better, uh, a referral and recommendation into somebody who might value your uh, skills and uh, attributes and basically um, you as a potential employee. And I saw an example of this uh, only the other day, which is um, you know absolutely brilliant. Having mentioned this to, to somebody, that um, all of a sudden they announced they'd got a pending interview coming up with potentially very exciting opportunity for them. And when I asked how that happened, they said one of their connections sent them the job description. They didn't apply or they didn't go on a job board. Somebody approached them with that job description. Somebody they already knew within their networks and saw them as a potential person for this job. Now, you tell me, but surely that must make them a much stronger candidate for that um, position straight away. You know, they've got somebody who's willing to champion their cause. So, you know, it's my belief, and it's been proven time and again, that especially in this current challenging climate in these crazy times, um, anything up to 80% of um, professional jobs are not advertised, in which case, find route to market, circumnavigate the recruitment process, and find people who can open doors for you and introduce you into situations. And I'll just share uh, a little story with you at this point. Um, uh, and I've used this many times, but it, it really encapsulates this. A number of years ago, um, I was working with a delightful lady and um, she was really struggling having worked abroad and come back and was all at sea and really um, couldn't quite get her head round the whole um, career transition aspect. Um, and uh, they'd actually gone out to Africa and done some missionary work and done some great work and, and had really the time of their life from the basis they were really making a difference to people's lives, which was very important to them. And to cut a long story short, they were applying for jobs here and looking for jobs. They were very depressed about the whole job market. It was probably around the time of the last recession, thinking about it. And um, I kept saying to them, well, look, you know, you need to be out there. You need to talk to people. You need to engage people. You need to get people who you know and trust and value you, you to really um, champion your cause and find people who can open doors for you. And it was always, yeah, 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 and reason why not to. And then a strange set of events happened. Uh, you know, this lady was a very devout Christian, and one of the parishioners in her church uh, got talking to her one day and just asked the question, as people do, well, how are things going for you? And she just happened to say, well, look, um, I, I, I'm actually struggling at the moment, um, but I, I, I'm starting to get in clarity. You know, I've been working with this career coach, that was me, and I'm starting to realise that what I really want to do now is to work for a charity where I can utilise my skills um, and make a difference. And blow me down, this parishioner said to her, well, look, um, I'll tell you what, leave it with me because I know the MD of a charity and uh, I'll have a word with him. And this woman was true to her word. And then what happened was a sequence of events which completely blew her away. Uh, she got a call from this guy who was the MD of the charity and uh, they got chatting 
and uh, he basically um, said, well, you know, could he come in and see me uh, tomorrow? And, um, you know, uh, we'll, we'll take it from there. And so she went and met with the MD of this charity and um, they just had a quick chat over coffee. And later that day, the phone rang and it was the MD of this charity and he offered her a job. And she said, I don't understand. You know, we haven't had a proper interview. And he said, no, well, I, you know, I can see from our, our sort of informal chat, you're just the sort of person we need. Anyway, she phones me up. She says, Steve, the weirdest thing has happened to me. I just don't understand it. Can you give me some advice on this? And I said, what do you mean? She said, well, <laughs> I've just been offered a job. And I said, well, that's fantastic. She said, but I haven't had an interview. And I said, what do you mean you haven't had an interview? She said, well, and she relayed this story. And I said, well, that's fantastic. She said, what do you mean? I said, you've done what I keep saying is the best way to get a job. You've circumnavigated the recruitment process. She said, what do you mean? I said, well, a friend of yours has put you forward, recommended you. They obviously see in you somebody who'd be ideal. They know the MD of the charity. He's had a quick chat with you. He can understand the sort of person you are. And it was actually a Christian charity. So a real meeting of minds. Absolutely perfect. And they wanted somebody who had a, a, a previous publishing background and writing background, which this lady did. So absolutely perfect. Marriage made in heaven, so to speak. Um, <clears throat> and she suddenly got it. And of course she accepted the job. And then what she did, uh, we worked together for a while at various coaching sessions, and, and she actually made that job her own. And so much so that she it, it evolved and she turned it into something bigger and better. But that was a real learning curve for her. And I've used that example so many times that it's a learning about a number of things I've covered while we've been online. Firstly, um, people generally want to help. Secondly, you never know who can unlock the key to your future. And thirdly, talk to people and really make it clear who you are and what you have to offer. Now that's very difficult unless you've done a lot of the sort of work that I talk about in my book and it's a key aspect of my Winning Through Redundancy and Laos online program, um, which I'll talk about again shortly. Um, so, you know, really great example there of uh, how to get a job without actually ever applying for a job and going through a formal interview process. You know, and wouldn't you rather get a job where you just have an informal chat with somebody rather than going through these awful rounds and rounds of interviews that I talked about at the outset. Must be much better, mustn't it? Um, I can't leave without talking about the scattergun approach. And what I mean by that? Well, one of the biggest mistakes people make uh, as a result of redundancy is they're firing off their CV or resume or left, right and centre. And what happens? Well, invariably it just goes into cyberspace, into the ether, and it's not targeted, it's not focused, you haven't done the key work to really establish um, what's important to you in your career and life and why, and who you are and what you have to offer. Unless you've done that piece of work, then it's going to be untargeted, it's going to be unfocused, and even if you get an interview by some uh, chance of luck, you get an interview, you're not going to be able to sell yourself in the best light. So don't go scattergun. Do the work first to work on yourself and really understand uh, what you want and why you want it and who you are and what you have to offer. Uh, scattergun won't uh, pay dividends in any respect. And then a another key thing is people thinking they must have another job. Well, again, you might be thinking, well, you're crazy, Steve. Of course I need another job. But what, what I mean by that is 
it doesn't have to be like for like, and I sort of alluded to this earlier. In the 21st century digital age, there are a million and one ways to earn a living, and it doesn't have to be by having a traditional J-O-B. It doesn't have to be by having a, a, a one type of self-employed work. In this digital age of opportunity, and it is an age of opportunity, there are a multitude of ways of earning a living. And the portfolio career concept, where you earn from multiple activities, multiple income strands, is definitely something that is the way forward. The COVID crisis has proven reliance on one job or one type of self-employed activity is dangerous. So you've got a greater safety net. And this is, uh, I've written about all of this in my third book, Portfolio Careers, and how to work for passion, pleasure and profit. And if you've got good eyesight, you can probably see that sitting on the shelf behind me. And again, uh, it's opened up a whole new world of thinking for many people. Um, and another one which might be contentious, but I've got reasons for saying this, don't always necessarily take the first job offer that comes along. And yes, I can hear the screams of derision of people say, oh, you must be crazy, Steve. I need to, uh, I need to work, I need to earn, and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I get all of that. Um, but it's often like the buses, that no sooner you get offered one opportunity, then another one comes along. So be absolutely clear in your own mind that the job you have been offered is right for you. And again, you might only know that if you work through things like your values and needs and what's important to you in your career and life and why, um, uh, which is a key part of many of my programs. Um, but obviously, in these challenging times, you might say, well, yeah, I'm going to take it anyway. But just be mindful that there might be something better that comes along. And you have to then be honest with yourself and decide, okay, even though it's not the sort of thing I'd normally do, that other opportunity is really what I was looking for. And last but not least, don't give up. Now, you know, it's a big statement. Uh, I, I've been not just coaching uh, people but also working encouraging a number of connections in these challenging times um, only yesterday I had a call with somebody who was clearly down on their luck as a result of again going through countless rounds of interviews and being knocked back at the final stage uh, and they actually said well I just feel like chucking it all in well, that's the point where you have to rethink and reframe and actually start to really focus on, again, what is important to you in your career and life and why? What do you really want to achieve? And rather than clutching at the first job that comes along, maybe it is that you do want to change career, that you do want to start a business of your own, or maybe you're excited by the thought of developing a portfolio career from multiple strands of passions, interest and talents and so on. Because ultimately, what can be better than that? So lots of things to think about. And if you really do need help with that, as a lot of people do, then I'm running my next uh, group course of Winning Through Redundancy and Layoffs. It's starting on the 9th of November. It might be open for a, a couple of days after that for enrolments. But most importantly, as a special UK lockdown offer, and you don't have to be from the UK. We've had people from the US on the program already who've achieved great success through it. Um, but I'm calling it a UK lockdown special offer for, for obvious reasons. Um, and I'm offering a massive £200 saving on the standard course price, uh, which is obviously not to be sneezed at in these current challenging times. So if you want to know more about that, then the place to go to is courses 
www.stevepreston.thecareercatalyst.com courses.stevepreston.thecareercatalyst.com and you'll find all the information on that uh, page. You can come back to me and ask for more information if you need it. But literally, you can click to enrol and you can get up and running and you can be on your way to achieving a bright new future. And it is important to, as I said right at the outset, work on yourself. And that means different things for different people. But I can guarantee that by investing in yourself in these challenging times, uh, as people who've done on the uh, an original course and are already reaping the benefits, um, by taking that leap of faith and making that investment, both not just in cost, but in time and effort and energy, you will get a return on your investment. So really something to think about. Uh, and as I say, with this special offer at the moment, you haven't got a better time. So there's less than three days to get on board, but as I say, I might allow enrolments for a couple of days after that. And within that, you get the benefit of weekly group coaching calls with myself, which have proven to be hugely beneficial for people who've been on the course previously. And also um, uh, access to a course community where people can help and encourage each other and ask key questions and so on. And this is a proven course now. People are already making breakthroughs. But basically, it's a very dynamic, repurse, repurposed version of my Winning Through Redundancy book from a number of years ago. And it features audio clips, video clips, uh, inspirational case studies, loads of downloadable activities, and other textual uh, content, um, and uh, references to a number of other resources which can help you basically win through redundancy and beat those redundancy blues. So I'm going to call it a day now. I hope that's been helpful for you. Um, and uh, if you like the sound of what I do and especially my course, then jump on board now because you might not ever get a better opportunity. And um, regardless, um, yes, we are living in crazy challenging times, um, but crazy challenging times always open up new opportunities. And it could be the opportunity to do exactly what my sign says behind me and follow your dreams. So whatever your situation, I wish you well with your quest and keep safe in, in these current challenging times.